Hello everybody, this is Chromos018 and I'm going to try and make this quick because I don't know how long I'm going to have to record before I have to start cleaning some more because someone's coming over today and we have to have at 5 and we have to have the house cleaned up or at least the living room, the kitchen, and the bathroom because that's the main area she's going to see. Anyway, this is going to be a recap and a few of my thoughts on the time, that time I got reincarnated as a slime, episode 1. And for those of you who have not seen the video, this is one of the shows that I ended up picking. The other one is Snow White with the Red Hair. And the most part of the reason why I picked this show is not only is because it's ongoing, but because it has elements in here that make me think of like an old style RPG where you have like skills and as you get stronger and stronger you gain new skills and new attacks and stuff. It made me think of that, and I was like, oh, this is sort of, this is really my thing, because I like video games. Anyway, this, uh, show starts off, uh, where I'm guessing it's, like, World War II or something like that. Like, probably not close, or probably close to being pro around Pearl Harbor. I assume that was Japan that was being attacked by, uh, planes, and the, essentially the city's on fire. And a girl and her mother is run are running away, and her mother gets hit and killed by some falling, fiery debris. And what made me think that something more to this girl than meets the eye is that someone essentially like, snapped their fingers, and fire essentially engulfs her in like a magical way. And she essentially disappears, and I thought that that was the person that got reincarnated. Oh no, I was completely wrong. No, actually she got... Uh, spoil I assume spoilers for the show, because this might not have happened yet in the show, and I could be completely off, but this is what I assume happened. I assume that girl got summoned into the same world that the slime got reincarnated into, and they actually mentioned this person in the episode. It's just... Yeah, that's what made me think of that, because, I mean, with that whole scene involving the girl... That's what made me think of it, because they said that the person is summoned to the world and essentially bound to the casters that summoned the person, and essentially they have to do whatever the person says. That's what made me think of the person, of the little girl, because that's why I think it happened to her. Because that fire did not look... It freaking spin in a freaking typhoon, for crying out loud. Isn't that... That's, that's not magical. Then I don't know what it is. Anyway, uh, it goes to present-day Tokyo, and a guy, I can't even remember what the guy's name is now. Uh, if somebody can remind me, that'd be great. Then again, I don't think we'll need to know his name then. Because, I don't think they ever, I don't know if they're ever going to mention his name again. Once this episode's over with. But, he go he works at, uh, some big business. And, he apparently has never had a girlfriend. So he's currently single, and this is actually important because he goes to meet with a friend and who and a girl, a friend and his I'm guessing his fiance that he's getting I assume he's getting married to from the way he alludes to it, and I'm guessing that they're going to go and meet and have lunch and stuff at the guy's favorite place. And before they can even do anything, some random guy running up with a freaking knife goes to attack the girl. His her fiance gets in the way, and the other guy pushes his friend out of the way, and gets stabbed instead. I'm guessing hitting an artery or something, because he loses a lot of blood really quick. And while all this is going on, he's thinking about different things, like how, I guess, it's so cold, it's so hot, because of, you know, dying and all. Uh, some voice pops up, keep talking about different skills that he gets, like, uh, heat temperature, uh, mo temperature regulator, how you can, uh, and heat and cold resistance, and, uh, a bunch of other skills, and then he starts talking about how if he ever gets, if he manages to either live through this, or in his next life he's going to go after all the ladies, and he gets the unique skill Predator, which when I first heard it, I was thinking, uh, it's not a good thing, because usually when you think of a Predator, when it comes to people, not a good thing. But it actually works with this, because he actually starts talking about how, uh, He'd love to have a body that doesn't bleed, and he gets, essentially, the the voice talks about how he gets a body that doesn't require blood, or essentially food or water at this point. 
and he dies. But before he dies, he tells his friend, hey, go wipe my hard drive. Go drop it in the freaking tub. And that's actually what he does after the fact. He takes the hard drive in a bathtub full, he puts in a bathtub full of water and essentially some subtitles pop up and say, never attempt this. He did this out of respect for his friend. Anyway, the guy dies because, I mean, you can't lose all that blood that he lost and not survive it unless you get a blood transfusion right there. Or get that already fixed, because there ain't no way you're surviving that. Anyway, uh, he gets reincarnated as a slime, and hence the title. And somehow he ends up in a different world where magic and all that stuff is, you know, is cre and magic and monsters are all that. And he actually finds out that he has the ability to absorb and analyze things, which means he analyzes a bunch of herbs, he makes a bunch of healing potions, because those are good for healing potions. And he stores them away in his slime stomach or something like that. And he absorbs some... Ah, uh, what was it called? Magicus? Crystals? Magicus ore? Something like that? I can't even remember if anybody can remind me, that'd be great. And he starts absorbing that and everything. And apparently, he has the sense, the ability magic sense, which enables him to see. Because he's got no eyes. And he comes across, uh, what was the creature called? Veruda, the storm dragon or something like that. And he, the guy, the dragon is actually, seems like a pretty nice dragon. Claiming he accidentally set fire to a city or a village or whatever. And a hero pops up and defeats him and uses uh, unlimited imprisonment on the dragon. Which sealed him away for 300 years. And it actually made me think that the hero who sealed him away was the girl who got killed by the fire in the beginning of the sh in the beginning of the episode. That's why I thought it was because they mentioned that the person was a summon, and essentially they're bound to the people, the magic users that summon them, and are essentially forced to do their bidding. And. Yeah, that is essentially the stuff that's happened in this episode. And, like I said, <laughs> the guy, the dragon, it just seems like not your typical scary dragon. He seems more like quirky, I guess, because he's essentially been sitting in there for boredom, dying of boredom, essentially, for the past 300 years. And he's all quirky and excited that somebody is actually there and may want to spend time with him and tries to keep him, tries to get him to stay. And keep him company because he obviously can't leave the imprisonment. And yeah, uh, that was essentially the first episode of that time I got reincarnated as a slime. I don't know what this story holds to be completely honest, but it seems like more my thing because, like I said, I'm into video games and more RPG style things where you can get like different abilities and skills and stuff depending on your species, your class, and everything. Like Dragon Age Origins, for example. Except, apparently, this guy can learn... I have no clue there's a limit on how many abilities he's got. Or can get. But he gets a lot in the next episode. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Enjoyed the reaction. And if you are a fan of the series, I'd recommend subscribing. Because I'm going to do the series the whole way through. And I think there's like currently 21 episodes in English. So, yeah. I would have done Black Clover. But I think I like this one a tiny bit more. But don't worry, once I finish Snow White with the red hair, Black Clover's up. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you all next time.